What is up everybody? Today we're going to go over this wedding I did in the summer. I fell a little behind on the behind the scenes stuffs that I did last year, but we're getting back to it. I have a few more coming from last year and then we're gonna start doing this year's in a couple of months because you know I'm in Michigan where it snows. So let's just get into it. So let's get started with the bride getting ready. Uh, that is obviously the bride right there. Uh, and then the rest of the party is in there getting ready. I was only in here for a few moments because uh, I had to get a few shots of her getting ready, such as the hair, makeup, etc. blah. Uh, I was also in the middle of this. Uh, I was outside doing the bridal party interviews, which is an add-on she wanted. Uh, it's just little interviews of the bridal party you know every each person in the bridal party says something whatever they want it gets put into a video and uh, we'll see that in just a second so here is the setup I have my main camera on my gimbal over where you see now uh, and that is just a secondary shot uh, just in case I want to switch uh, angles obviously you can't see the chair in the shot this is just the GoPro wide angle uh, it's a pretty close up like 70 mil I've also got my tripod camera with a mic on it, um, with a 35 mil, I believe, uh, close up on her face. And then I also put a mic on the floor next to them. And then I also mic them up with a lav each time. After we were done with all the bridal party stuff, uh, I ended up getting some shots of the groom getting ready. Uh, he got a little more ready than I wanted. So I had him fussle with his tie so I could get a shot of that. Uh, take his jacket off, put it back on so I get a cool shot of that. And then obviously the photographer right there in front of me was doing the same thing. And I always wait for the photographer before doing these types of shots because we're on the same team and we need to get the same stuff. So if I do it with the groom and then the photographer also has to do it with the groom, then he's just gonna have to do it again. And it's a hassle for the groom, uh, not less the photographer, but it's mostly for the groom. You don't wanna bother the groom and bride on their day of more than really necessary. So. And then just to have the little bit extra, uh, we had the best man come on and put his jacket on for him. Uh, I don't remember what shot I used, but it always helps to have more than one type of shot because what if you didn't like the shot of him putting his jacket on himself and you like the shot better of the best man putting it on him. And then the next thing we did was we got the dress. Uh, that person on the right there is the second photographer, the secondary, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this was a really good spot we found to put the dress. It was really cool, rustic, matches the vibe of the venue we were at, which is good. When you're taking the dress somewhere, you for one, don't want to take it somewhere that's really far away in case the bride needs to get in it right away. You don't want to take it somewhere where it could fall and get dirty or go anywhere where it can get dirty, even if it would be really cool. Um, and if you do end up doing something like that, I would highly recommend having one of the bridesmaids or bride physically take the dress for you and set it up so that you are not the one to blame if something happens that kind of sounds rough but you kind of want to take away any blame that could happen when you are in possession of something very important like the wedding dress um, that's just kind of a small tip there and the photographer wanted to bring the dresses inside and get this shot with all the other bridesmaids dresses I got a few shots of it, but I was pretty sure that I was not going to be using this in the video and most likely using the shot I got outside, but it doesn't hurt to get an extra shot or two just in case for some odd reason the shots you got were not good or blurry or, you know, something happened then you at least have something of the dress and it's better than nothing. So, because as you can see here, one of the things I did not show you was the fact that during getting my first shots of the dress outside, the photographer actually walked right in my shot and it didn't turn out as well. However, I was able to use the first few seconds before she walked in front of it and it worked out just fine. And then we went from there to getting staging shots of the rings with the bouquet and the flowers and stuff. Uh, again, the photographer set this all up. I tend to let the photographer set up most of the stuff because one, they have an eye for it, more than I do at least. Two, they're really good at it because they do it all the time. And three, it makes my life easier, so I don't have to do as much. And that's not the main reason, but she did set it up to look really nice and I ended up getting a shot of it, which worked out pretty well. And then they wanted to go get the guys, get the photos of them, get them all done while the bride was still getting ready. Uh, so we took them outside in front of the barn and put them together, you know, got the typical shots, got the one-on-ones, got the fun things, the funny shots, the, the manly, fun, cool, whatever shots. But that's kind of all that's going on here. 
for the most part, I will usually let the photographers stage the guys or the girls, whoever, whenever we're doing photos, they'll stage whatever way they want. I'll get what I need. And then after the photographer is done or in the middle, I will ask if I can stage them to do a few things because I really prefer movement shots, more dynamic shots rather than stage shots because they look a lot better in video. And that's just kind of how I go about my day with getting the stage shots because I'm not a big fan of, you know, looking at somebody stand still in a video clip. It just doesn't look fun. So having them walk, high five, shake hands, move, whatever, looks a lot better than just standing still. Uh, but once she got her stuff on, I was allowed in there and uh, I, they let me in before the mother started actually, you know, putting the dress together and buttoning it up or whatever the dress may have. Um, so then I went in, got my shots, we staged some stuff. I got some shots of the, the bride's mom, you know, buttoning up the dress, zipping it up, along with, I think, the maid of honor or her sister, one of the two. Um, but I got some shots of that, you know, some far or some close ups and some wide shots of it, just to have a little bit of everything. One thing I learned is that uh, the bride and groom love their dogs a lot. They're very dog people, just like me. So I had to get some shots of the dog. Um, I definitely got some shots of the dog right here. And then behind me, one of the dogs was actually looking at itself in the mirror. And I thought that was pretty funny. It's like I did find it on uh, the dog, super cute looking at herself in the mirror or him. I don't remember what it was, uh, but it was, it was a cool shot and she liked it. I put it in the video uh, because why not? And then this part was pretty rough for me because I did not have a chance to mic her up or anything. So all I had was a microphone under her chair and then also the mic on my camera. Uh, she was doing a letter reading that I wanted to use in the video, but I ended up not because there was way too much car noise and wind noise. Uh, we were planning on redoing the voice uh, later on in the day, but we totally missed out on that. It was a pretty busy day, so we just didn't get to it. And then here is the first look with her dad. I had a camera set up to the right, and then I was on my gimbal with a close up. Uh, I usually set this up very generally because it's not something I spend a lot of time on in the video. I do try to put in the reaction in the walk up, but I don't try to make it very long uh, because especially if the bride and groom are doing their own first look, I want that to be the most important thing in the video. So I will focus a lot more on the actual shots of that. So this in the video probably lasted for maybe 15 seconds. If the bride and groom do their own, it usually lasts for a whole minute or so uh, just to show the whole moment. And I didn't have time to listen to the recording from when we did the letter reading for the bride. Uh, so I ended up doing the same thing for the groom. And now we're on to the girls doing some stage shots before we do the first look with the bride and the groom. Uh, again, same thing as with the guys. I'll let the photographer do her thing and then I get the shots I need. More dynamic, more fun, more movement. And of course, we have to get a shot or many shots of the bride by herself in her dress. Uh, I use this usually for the reveal shot of her in her dress, works out pretty well. You can get this shot literally any time of the day you want and it would still work to put in as the reveal shot. As long as it's just her by herself without the groom there, then it works really well in the video. After we get the bride, of course, we have to also get the groom. So the bride went into her suite and then the groom came out. We got some shots of him and uh, went from there. Looks like the one clip I needed is corrupted for the first look part, uh, which is totally fine, but uh, they did do a first look and then she wanted some pictures of her with her dogs, which is awesome. And then the groom came in and also got pictures with her and the dogs. And then from there, we went out and did some whole bridal party pictures to get some out of the way before the ceremony. At this point, we were on a little bit of a time crunch trying to get a lot of pictures done in a little bit of time before the ceremony and before people started arriving because as you might know, the bride definitely does not need to be out and about about 30 minutes before the ceremony because that's when people start showing up and the whole point is to not have people see her before the wedding. So we were getting stuff done. I got a lot of my dynamic shots that I needed of the whole party walking, moving, dancing, laughing, you know, whatever I may need. That's a lot of fun. So we did that uh, mostly in the location you see here. And then after the ceremony is where we did some in some different spots with just the bride and the groom by themselves. So as you can see here, we're doing a more dynamic shot where everybody lifts their arm up and then she gets a dip kiss from the groom. Uh, we did a lot of like this and then we went from there. And of course we had to have a little bit of fun. Uh, the girls picked up the groom, which was fun. They did a cool shot. And then I believe the guys also picked up the bride, which was pretty fun. Uh, so those shots definitely made it into the video because it's a lot of fun when they do fun stuff like that without you having to ask or tell. Um, 
and then here's some of those more dynamic walking shots that I'm referring to. And just to get some out of the way, we did do some with just the bride and the groom together before the ceremony, uh, just so we had more to deal with when we did the video uh, and the pictures. It's always better to have more than less. Um, that's key in wedding videography and photography. So we finally made it to the ceremony and uh, this is me showing you one of my shots. I'm on a 70 to 200 right here. So it's gonna be a pretty close up shot of the bride and groom when they're standing up there. And then you might be able to see my other camera over there by that tree bush looking thing. Um, and that is on a 35 millimeter, which is going to be a little bit more of a wide shot. That's kind of my general B cam shot. And then as I started watching people walk down the aisle, I noticed that both of the best man and maid of honor had a dog on each arm. And I figured they also did it on purpose. So I had to go in and get a shot of them walking down the aisle with the dogs. Uh, Cause why wouldn't you put that in the video? Obviously you're gonna wanna see your dog. So I got a shot of that and then immediately uh, got ready to get the shot of the bride walking in. And as you saw there, my camera froze for some odd reason. So I can't show you the bride walking down, but I think you get the point. Um, then as the ceremony goes on, I just get random shots on my B-roll camera. And then right here, I'm just kind of showing you what my shot looks like. Um, it's not the most ideal, but it's really the only place I could put that tripod that worked. Directly after the ceremony, we went out and got some shots of just the bride and the groom together being cute, getting all those fun B-roll shots to use in the video. Um, and that's kind of the essence of what we did there. But as you can see, this is the shot I have for the toast. Uh, it's not hard to see uh, that I have both the bride, the groom, and the person speaking in the shot. Same thing here. Uh, I have the bride and the groom centered with the person speaking on the left. And then after the toast, uh, before the dancing, we went out and got some uh, B-roll of them being cute together again, just in a different location. Uh, as you see here, we did some spins and some fun stuff. Uh, we also went down by some longer grass and did some more walking shots and all that. And then after that, we went back up for the open dancing. I didn't know they were doing the shoe game, which uh, kind of sucks when you don't really know if they're doing a specific event. Uh, I always try to ask the DJ when I first come in if they're doing anything special for that specific reason. Uh, however, I ended up, as you can see here, just putting a camera down uh, on the table that you know had good framing to see both of them and uh, my thing froze again, so it's cool. Then we get into the first dances and uh, this includes the mother, son and the father, daughter dances. And uh, then we did some open dancing. We almost forgot cake cutting, which is at the very end. I was already past my time to leave. Uh, I ended up staying a little bit longer just so we get the cake cutting. So we did the cake cutting and then after that I was done for the night and uh, it was a good day. Everything went really well. The photographer was really cool. They were very helpful and very nice. I can't say that about everybody, but it was a good day. Everything worked out. Didn't have any major issues, which is always a plus. And uh, the wedding video turned out awesome. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.